What's going on guys? Coming to you live from Grunt Proof German headquarters. I've got an interesting little piece of gear to show you guys. Grab your cup of joe or whatever you're drinking. Check it out. I have something here in my hand that looks kind of funny and it's not a new form of technology but it is causing that technology to become a little more interesting especially to guys like me. This is a battery powered hand warmer. This is from a company called Koopa. You can find their stuff on Amazon. This is the 10,000 milliamp per hour version which cost about 38 bucks. They sent this to me for testing. As you guys know I am 100% agenda free. I cannot be bought. So about 98% of the companies that write me from Amazon asking me to test their stuff, I just usually give a flat out no. This thing, however, I decided to give it a go for many reasons. First, a lot of the hardcore old school outdoorsmen, they're going to write products like this off from the very beginning simply because it's electronic. And me being an old grunt myself, I will tell you, we never put our faith into products like this. The only other battery charger I have is from Anchor. And that one's already two years old. So I figured, hey, well, even if it sucks, I've got a free little battery charger out of it. Most of these companies, they like to see an unboxing review. And I've actually checked them out on Amazon. All the video reviews are unboxing, no field tests. People are talking about how they like the product and they are just now pulling it out of the box. Okay, so here's my unboxing. This is the box. This is the product. It does come with a C charging cable. What I like is it has two different inputs. You can use the C input, which is gonna charge faster, or you have your regular micro USB port. That's pretty cool. But it only has one output. You can put your little hand strappy thing on here. It's got a nice little LED indicator. It is not waterproof, obviously, because all the ports are open. It is water resistant, however. I've tested that. I've gotten it a little bit wet, and it's survived for me so far. I have taken it on my last two overnight freezing camp outs and threw it down at the bottom of my sleeping bag just to kind of toast my feet a little bit. In freezing conditions, I did feel the heat and it did help a lot on the high setting. If you're talking about maybe the fall months or a cool summer night, you could probably put it on the low or medium setting and that'll help you out. As far as heating times go, they're advertising 15 hours on low, 12 hours on medium, 8 hours on high. Obviously, your ambient temperature is strongly going to affect how this thing performs. My home test proved that their claims are fairly accurate, plus or minus about half an hour. My last two freezing camps I did on high, I couldn't even get half that time. I would suggest in freezing temperatures, cut those times in half so you know not to depend on those times. Also claiming you can charge an iPhone three times with this, I strongly doubt that because I plugged in a Samsung 6 Active 6, yes, I still have a phone that old. It charged it twice and the battery was done. Even though they claim you could charge a newer Galaxy three times. I'm not sure if their power rating is inaccurate or what. The only thing that's been accurate so far has been their actual heating times in an indoor environment. It doesn't have an IP rating and I've also yet to find any kind of impact rating. Most of these small electronics, they're good up to about a meter. I have dropped it a few times in camp on the hard frozen ground. Haven't had problems yet besides a little bit of a rattle. It still works though. They're also claiming that this can get up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And you know what? I believe that. When it is on a high setting, it is very hot in your hand. It actually heats up fairly quickly. I left it on high for a few minutes, handed it off to my wife, and she was like, holy crap, that's hot. So this is our child's thermometer. Anything over 105 is called high. Kind of silly, should tell you. And high. So it's well over 105. Let's repeat that. High again. Now, is it grunt proof? I doubt it. We're going to beat it up a little bit. 
I am going to test it against my standards as much as possible, keeping in mind what kind of equipment we're dealing with. Obviously, this is not something that should be able to handle high impact. I can't dunk it in water. I can't hit it with a baseball bat. But you know what? I am going to continue to take it camping and I'm going to treat it like all the rest of my gear when I'm out at camp. For now, I say it's pretty damn cool. I'm liking it so far. We're gonna keep testing it and come springtime, I'll let you guys know how it did. One last note on gadgets like this. So in the infantry, we never depended on stuff like this because electronics fail. As soon as you need them, they are going to fail. You should never be going out into freezing conditions depending on something like this anyway. Think about the manual equivalent. What do you bring out into the forest in the winter to supplement heat? Those little hand and foot warmers. Guess what? Those are good for one use and then you toss them in the garbage. Who knows where they end up? As long as the battery holds up, with something like this, you have a heating source that you can bring to every single camp. And to me, that's pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Oh, so where else can you put this thing?